Hi everyone, Bob Black with Spider TV here at Pitt Field, home of Richmond Baseball, and now the new home of our new Richmond Baseball coach, Mick Aoki, who joins us, and we get a little bit of an opportunity to find out more about him. Mick, first of all, just welcome publicly and officially to Richmond. Yeah, thank you very much. Excited to be here. Hey, you have a long uh, resume and history of experience. You've been at Columbia, Boston College, Notre Dame, Moorhead State, so you've made this move before, yep. uh, maybe under different circumstances. So how's it going so far? How's the transition? How have you kind of attacked uh, settling in here on campus? Um, well, it's still a lot in the air, right? Uh, trying to, you know, sell a house back in Lexington, which is where we live, and then uh, looking at some things here and uh, trying to get the staff sorted out, which I was, I was able to do that. And I, we retained Nate and Josh and Colin and so excited. Um, and the more I work with them, the more I feel like really good about them. They're very diligent, hardworking guys. And so I think we've been on the recruiting trail in this weird world of the portal and all that sort of stuff and doing that. Um, and then just trying to, as, uh, as Bridget walked in, I'm trying to empty out boxes that I had bringing in here and trying to stick books up into the shelves and make it look like someone lived there, you know, so it's been good. How impactful is it that you kept all three guys on your staff as some kind of consistency and probably also as a guiding light for you a little bit, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I, 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 I talked to a lot of people that I knew about um, all three of them. I talked to all the players about all three of them and all of the players were really complimentary about it. Um, the guys that have seen them work on the road, the guys that have worked with them have all been very complimentary, high character, high integrity, big work ethic guys. And so um, they, and they've been that way in my experience with them in the, in the short time. They've been out on the road. Um, they've been very detail oriented about their recruiting and the reports that we talk back and forth about. I also think, right, I mean, it's, um, there's more than just going out and evaluating a kid and then trying to recruit them here. And with the admission stuff, um, obviously the cost is, you know, they were a little expensive, right, on the expensive side. But I mean, so we have, but we have the need-based financial aid and scholarship. And, and I think some of the institutional knowledge that those guys have has been really, really valuable. Um, even in the short period of time that I've walked around the department, people are very complimentary of those three guys. So it's, uh, I, I think it's been really, really big. And just from a purely selfish standpoint, it's allowed me to try to help my wife and my three kids try to transition out here too. All right, how about from the player perspective? Eventually that's what it boils down to yep. is the guys that you put on the field. How did you kind of go about evaluating what you will have coming back and where you're gonna have to go to fill out the roster? Well, I mean, I think it's easy to just look at the numbers and here's these guys and these guys left either because they're out of eligibility or they chose to go into the portal and go someplace else or grad transfer or those different things. And so once we got that straightened out, I had to lean certainly a lot on Colin, Nate and Josh to give me a feel of what it was, what our needs are. And then we've been just trying to attack them through, um, you know, looking at guys that are looking to transfer. There's a handful of even high school kids that were still out there that were looking to make a switch because with all this portal stuff, they got kind of like cut loose by the programs that they were going to late in the summer. And so we're just trying to fill it. We've, I think we've been off to a good start. I think we're on some kids that are, that are really, really good. We feel good about the kids who have committed to us. We're hoping for a couple more here today and tomorrow. And um, when it's all said and done, I, I, think we'll have a, I think we'll have a good roster. You know, I think one of the things you talked about when we've talked previously was having experience, that mm -hmm. that would really help, particularly when you're building a program, which you've had experience doing. How do you feel about that, about having as experienced a roster as you can? Not necessarily spider experience, but college baseball experience. I, I think that's really important. I think especially, I don't think it bodes well for you at, at almost any level. I think sometimes with like the very higher echelon of power five guys, they can get those guys that... Um, you know, sort of higher draft picks that decided to go to school. Um, and those guys can be immediate contributors, but my feeling is that freshmen coming in that are immediate contributors are outliers rather than the norm. And so I think to have guys who've been there, who've seen it, who've gone through the process and they're not trying to figure out whether or not they belong is, is really, really important. I think from a leadership standpoint, we've been on a few older guys that have been on teams that have won, have had success, and they can bring that mindset and they can bring that, um, that type of attitude to our program, I think that that'll be, a, I think that's really important. Hey, from a recruiting standpoint as well, 
Um, how much does the history of Richmond baseball, I know it resonates with you, how much does that resonate with the recruits? When you can mention Sean Casey and Mark Budzinski, former Spiders, are both big league coaches now yeah, yeah, yeah. who played in the major leagues. Brian Jordan, obviously. Right. Uh, how much does that kind of resonate? I think it does, especially as you walk them through and they see like the, you know, the pro baseball board that's up there. Obviously, Casey did a nice job of getting himself into the news recently, <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Thanks, Sean. Um, and uh, so I think that kind of thing where it gets back there and, and those guys are, you know, I think there was a nice article about the two of them being in the big leagues together now and, and what a cool thing that is. And, um, you know, Sean, K I don't know Sean personally. I have a connection to him through a former player of mine. And, so I listen to his podcast and it's like off the charts energy and it's so cool, you know? Um, and so, and, and to bring that sort of thing and, and, you know, he, he's really into like that mental game stuff. He's really into like the personal development along with, you know, I don't know that he's going to be talking to Aaron judge about his personal development, but I think that it's going to be, uh, I think that kind of stuff is, is good. I mean, he's gone to, as much as I hate to say it as a Red Sox fan, he's gone to yeah. the iconic Ooh. brand in- <laughs> The um, evil empire. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but he's gone to the most iconic brand. He's gonna be the hitting coach there. I can't help but think that, you know, those guys will, you know, maybe Susie Waldman will put, you know, Richmond Spiders onto a broadcast here and there. So I yeah. think that'll be really cool. Hey, a couple more for you, Mick, uh, before we let you get back to what you really need to be doing. Your experiences at Boston College and Notre Dame, obviously at a high level, uh, Big East and, and ACC. What has that kind of done for you and how can that help you here at Richmond? Well, I, I think there's a couple of things. I think, you know, both of those schools are high academic schools, much like Richmond. Both of those schools are trying to compete at the highest level of Division One, much like Richmond. Um, they all three, we all three have the same t price tags and you're trying to figure out the recruiting and how to make it affordable for families. So I think that that can help. I also think that when you're here, you have to allow for a certain sensitivity to balance the academic commitments that kids have, but still make sure that they're getting their work in and continuing to develop and help your team. And so having a little bit of flexibility with that while still maintaining really high standards, um, understanding that there's going to be certain weeks during the school, you know, school year where they're all getting smashed by midterms or different things like that, that maybe that's a place where you, you back off just a little bit on different things that you're doing and have a little empathy for those different things. And, and just kind of mixing the, you know, what they need to do on and off the field as a baseball player with what they have to do as an academic and as a student and, and all of those things. I think that having a little bit of intimate knowledge with that, I think is really helpful. All right, last one for this conversation. Okay. There will be many more. We're sitting out here in the new plaza behind yeah. the right, right center field fence. You've got the new hitter facility, indoor facility over our shoulders back there. How important were those additions to you? And can you foreshadow that, you know, maybe there's more to come in the future to enhance pit field? Yeah, no, I, I think this thing is really cool. And the building back there behind us, the hitting building is beautiful, um, it, you know, inside and out. They've, They've done an outstanding job with it, making it sure that it kind of blended in with the aesthetic of the entire campus, too. I think that that's really important. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, we, we are able to do a little grandstand project and make that go from dugout to dugout and make that, um, you know, just even make the fan experience really good, but also even like this, this format, right, the streaming format really good. And you don't see just this kind of like a little bit of a makeshift type of a deal. But I think having turf in this climate is a huge thing to be able to get out here in January and February, as long as it's not, you know, you don't have one of those weirdo weeks where it's really, really cold. Yeah. Um, but really, really cold is probably a little bit different in my estimation. Yep. Um, so those boys better be ready to be out here when it's like 30 <laughs> degrees. Um, and, uh, and, and so I think all of those things are great. And then when you look at the facility, you look at the beauty of the campus. My, my daughter saw it for the first time yesterday and was like blown away by it. Um, and so, yeah, we're, I think that's a really big deal. The facility piece is a big deal. The way that the campus looks, um, you know, I've had it described to me as like, uh, people are like, yeah, you go there and it's like Disney World, right? Nothing's out of place. Everything's <laughs> mowed, everything's put together. So I think it's, uh, I think it's great. All right, great stuff, Mick. Right. Go get back to work. We look forward to seeing you and your spider team on pit field before long. All right, thanks. I appreciate it, Bob. Mick Ioki, the new spider baseball coach with us on Spider TV.